How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle, and today we're going to be taking a look at The Closet, issue number one. This is from Image Comics and is written by James Tinian IV with art by Gavin Fullerton. In this, you get a couple whose marriage is kind of on the rocks. Uh, they're always arguing, and the guy feels like whenever he goes home, he does something wrong, and he's kind of retreating to a local bar. However, the couple is going to move, and that's, of course, amping up the stress levels, but they also have a young kid. The young kid has a classic childhood fear. There's a monster in my closet, which, of course, the parents don't believe, but this is a horror book. It's, of course, going to be a real monster with a, a strange ability that's hinted at towards the end of this comic. Now, overall, this is a comic that I have hope for. The first issue didn't really blow me away, but I know James, uh, James Tinian the Force work. I've been reading through The Nice House on the Lake, which is a great story, and I know that he's going to be going somewhere with this, but this first issue wasn't the best of hooks. Granted, the first issue for Nice House on the Lake wasn't the best of hooks either. There was a bunch of text dump in that one. Uh, this one, though, you just get a, a hint at what the creature in the closet can do. There's a little moment towards the end where you're like, okay, that's its power. Maybe if it can do this, then moving won't save the kid because they keep saying, oh, you're going to move, you're never going to see that closet again. Well, maybe not. You know, and I do sense that they're going to do something strange and different, but we didn't see much of that except for at the tail end of this book. And we get the couple that's fighting. And, yeah, they're, they're fighting realistically. A lot of it's over trivial stuff, and the dad just doesn't think he can do well enough. And, you know, it, it's realistic, but at the same time, neither one of the characters, the mom nor the dad, are super likable. And, you know, I kind of wish we had just a fun, likable character to, to get us into the story, to root for and hope that he does better. But they're both kind of at each other's throats, and I, I didn't really get into either one of these characters. And, yeah, this also moves very, very quick. I read it in one sitting, and I, it was one of those cases of, oh, I'll just flip through a few pages, see what it's like, and then next thing you know, the whole book's done. So it's a really quick read, but in turn, it doesn't feel like that much happens. It feels like just a couple of scenes, and then it's done. So it's one that, you know, when I look at the powers that this creature is hinted at having, I think, okay, this is going to go somewhere, but I really wish that they had made the characters more likable and they had shown a bunch more of this creature, you know, just kind of lure us in because as it stands, you know, uh, most of the book, you get the, the mom and dad arguing and it's just at the very end that it, you know, leans into the horror. And I'm like, I, I wish this was a stronger hook because I think the book is going somewhere. So this is one that I have hope for, but it didn't blow me away the first issue. But I think... I think when we go farther on, because, like, the last half of the book was way better than the first, I think we are going somewhere. It's just it didn't hook me in right away, you know? It, like, you need a stronger opening. Uh, I guess let's go ahead and switch to the close-up camera. I'll show you guys a bit of the art, and I'll go into the story in a little bit more detail. So, without further ado, let's switch to the close-up camera. All right, here we are in the castle, and we're going to take a closer look at this issue. Uh, first off, the striking cover, you get the closet with the boy, and then behind him, this very iconic door. I do love whoever's idea it was to put those glow-in-the-dark shapes on it. It makes the door distinctive, it shows that it's a kid's door, and yeah, it makes it a lot cooler than just having a regular door. And this cover is what pulled me in. It got me to go, hey, what's that? Big red door, classic scary movie concept. So yeah, great cover. And open it up, we see the closet, those shapes kind of hanging in space, and then we get the credits below that. Um, 
Now, after this, I'm going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a bit of a look at the story. Now, I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to analyze the book a little bit. But I'll I'll feel like I'm going deeper into the story than I normally do. Uh, but I will stop at the same place. I I stop right after the staples a lot. Uh, but the thing is. This is an introductory book, and it's also a book that moves very fast. So yeah, I'll feel like I'm talking about more than I actually am. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at the plot. Uh, we open up on this first page with your main character at a bar. We see that he's drinking way down there, and all the young, cool kids are hanging out up here. But he's going to be talking with the bartender instead. Um, we flip it open. And the bartender's like, hey, I thought you moved. And he's like, oh, we had the moving party a bit ago, but the truck just got here today, and my wife sent me out to buy tape, and there's the tape in that bag there. And he's like, I'm going to lie to her and say that the first door is out of tape, and I had to go all over town looking for it, and that's why it's taken me so long to disguise the fact that he's been drinking. But he says that he doesn't want to be at the house right now, he says that he feels better if he's out of his wife's hair. He feels like anything he does, he's just gonna get me he's just gonna mess it up. His wife's just gonna yell at him, and he's basically retreating. So yeah, the marriage isn't doing that great. So he has this conversation with the bartender, and he says that his son is afraid of the monster in the closet. And he's like, oh yeah, it's a common whore trope. And he says, I'm actually an uncle. And what my sister does whenever her kid gets afraid is she takes a spray bottle full of water and a little bit of, I think, lavender oil and sprays it around the room. And, he, and the sister tells the kid that it's unicorn pee. You know how dogs mark their territory and then other dogs know, oh, hey, that's that other dog. They say that if you spray this around, the the monster will go, oh, a unicorn lives there, I should just stay away. So it's a weird concept, but apparently it works for this kid. Uh, basically, he says that you have to show the kids that you're listening to them. Otherwise, when you say, oh, a monster, that's ridiculous, the kid just feels like mom and dad are ignoring him. So it's an interesting concept there. Um, anyway we get the apartment building and the kid grabs a stuffed animal and then there's the closet door right there and of course this is all interrupted by the parents yelling at each other uh, we get he tries his lie but the wife is not having it I can smell the alcohol on your breath you're you've not been at multiple stores you've been drinking and you kinda see that this it's a vicious cycle, you know, the, he does something, she gets mad and yells at him, and that causes him to run away and go drinking, which is going to make her even madder, and, you know, yeah, she does have some valid gripes against this guy, but the way she's going about it is going to inadvertently cause him to mess up even more, so, yeah, their marriage is definitely on the rocks, and they definitely need a counselor or something, and on top of that, a few pages later, it's revealed that he actually bought uh, masking tape, which, trust me, definitely not going to work <laughs> uh, for packing boxes. But anyway, the kid interrupts them and says that he's scared, and the dad decides to do that whole uh, unicorn pee trick. Uh, but unfortunately for him, he kind of does it in a hurry and messes it up, and the kid goes, Dad, I don't believe you. I saw you filling that from the sink. So yeah, now the lie is ruined forever, and he tries to sit down and say, hey, there's no monster in the closet, just go to bed. And the kid tries to listen to him, tries to go to sleep, and of course the parents are going to be arguing and keeping him awake. Uh, but he's there, he's lying in bed, he's looking at the closet, and he's starting to doze off when a mysterious creature does come crawling out. And yeah, there's the staple. That's about the halfway point of the book. I don't want to go any farther than that, but yeah, let's just say the creature is interesting. I mean, from what we saw so far, he is a, a little creature, kind of like uh, 
about the boy's size, you know, which makes me wonder if they're in some way connected. But the creature has some weird powers, and it's kind of implied that moving isn't going to just solve all their problems. The creature will still come after them at their next house, and I am really curious where the cosmic element will go. But that being said, you look at this first issue, it's a little bit of creepy stuff towards the end when we finally see the monster in the closet, and that's the horror, that's the scary stuff that I came over for, but a lot of that first half is the parents fighting with each other, and they're, they're clearly both in the wrong, but they're both in a downward spiral, really, and it's hard to get behind either one of them. Uh, I guess the kid's your main character, so he's the most likable there. But yeah, it didn't really pull me in as well as I'd hoped, you know? But I definitely see the potential, and I know uh, James Tinian, The Force, work. You know, I, I've read Nice House on the Lake, so I know that this is going somewhere. It's just as it stands for an issue one, I wish it had more to hook and pull me in. But a lot of our time is spent with a, a couple arguing, and it's just towards the tail end that we get a hint of what the closet can do, you know? So... Not a great first issue, but I think it has potential. I'll definitely be tuning in for issue two. I'll give it a couple issues, and, and, and I think it will have me hooked by then. But, you know, it's one of those where I'm like, I really want it to be good. I just don't know if it is going to be good. So we'll see how it turns out later. So cautiously optimistic, a good enough first issue, and we do get to the end. It is fun. But I don't want to spoil that for you guys. Uh, but anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my horror comics playlist. You can see me talk about other things, you know, a bunch of Colin Bunn books, some anthology horror. Uh, so if you want to see me talk about more horror stories, you can find those there. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Horror Comics playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.